This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. Thank you to Jim Corns for sitting in for me last week on a very busy program. We're going to begin this week's program at Mammoth Park with three stakes races going back to last week and the 4th of July holiday, seeing Mammoth Park hosting the Grade 3 Boiling Springs for fillies on the grass. Let's head down to Mammoth and the running of the Boiling Springs. They're racing in the Boiling Springs. Perilous Pursuit came out a bit at the start, and it will be Quite a Bride who goes straight to the front. Quite a Bride and Cornelio Velasquez take the early initiative. They're in front by two lengths. Stolen Prayer is running in second. Then it's Ebony Rose third to the inside. Stadore follows in fourth, three and a half lengths off the lead. After that, it's No Reason to the inside, followed by Robin's Anthem. Perilous Pursuit is second, last in the early stages, and Four Kisses is the trailer. The first quarter, 24 and four. Not a fast pace, quite a bride, going along easily in front. Opening up a two and a half length lead and not going quickly. Stolen Prayer second by a length. To the outside, it's Stadore. Ebony Rose is down on the inside with five lengths to make up. Then no reason. Robin's Anthem on the far outside. Perilous Pursuit drafting in behind horses. Five off the lead. And it's another four and a half back to four kisses. A 48 and four half mile. A big advantage to the favorite, Quite a Bride, who begins her run into the far turn, unpressured with a length and a half lead. It is Stolen Prayer on the outside, second, Ebony Rose, third at the rail, then comes to Dory. Robin's Anthem, Perilous Pursuit's got run. Perilous Pursuit looking to come through between horses. Tight spot there, didn't get through yet, did Perilous Pursuit. And then No Reason circling the field, and Four Kisses is running on. Three quarters in one, 12 and three, they're into the stretch. And Quite a Bride set down for the final furlong. A three-length lead, getting away from Ebony Rose. Perilous Pursuit's got running room now, but won't get to Quite a Bride, and with a Thunder rumbling in the background. Quite a bride wins the Boiling Springs by five lengths. Ebony Rose, second best under the wire, then perilous pursuit and four kisses. Quite a bride getting the win under Cornel or Cornelio Velasquez on the front end just about every step of the way as the favorite almost uh, three and a half lengths over Ebony Rose with perilous pursuit. Back in the third spot with an off the pace move after a little bit of a difficult break. The winner, Quite a Bride, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Stormy Atlantic, from Wise Bride by Blushing Groom. Bred in Florida by the Ara Santa Maria de Araras and owned by the breeder. Trained by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez, Quite a Bride. Covers the mile and a sixteenth on the turf at Mammoth in 141 and 3. We're going to head right back to the turf at Mammoth now for Saturday's Grade 1 United Nations. This is a $750,000 mile and three eighths. Let's head back to New Jersey in the United Nations. They're off in the United Nations, and there goes Shake the Bank. And Shake the Bank goes straight out to the early lead. Ramazuti English Channel Cacique is right there with relaxed gesture. And then it's a two-length gap back to the two trailers, Silverfoot and Better Talk Now. So the race unfolds as expected here with front-running Shake the Bank in front by two lengths. Cacique is in second position. Ramazuti third to the outside. English Channel is down at the rail. He's a little bit ranked there. English Channel is in fourth after a 24 and one quarter. He wants to go, but he's being throttled back early by John Velasquez. He's down on the inside. Then it's four lengths back to Relax Gesture in fifth, being tracked by Better Talk Now. And Silverfoot is 12 lengths off of Shake the Bank, who's going along at a moderate clip. Past the stands for the first time. It is Shake the Bank in front. He ran a 47 and three half mile. He's not flying. He's doing his job as they race for the clubhouse turn. Shake the Bank and Tommy Turner two and a half in front of Cacique. English Channel is down on the inside of Ramazuti. And then it's three lengths back to relaxed gesture. Better talk now. Second last for the run up the back stretch. He's now 10 lengths off of Shake the Bank and four clear of Silverfoot. Onto the back stretch in 111 and 4 fifth seconds, and Shake the Bank's lead is only three and a half lengths. Cacique is his closest pursuer in second. Ramazuti is third. 
English Channel is in fourth. He's five lengths off the lead and well held at this stage. Relaxed Gesture has six and a half lengths to make up with a half mile remaining. Better talk now. Still under complete control of Ramon Dominguez. Five and a half lengths off the lead. And then comes Silverfoot. Around the far turn. Shake the Bank is joined by Cacique. Ramazuti is outside of them. English Channel makes his run now. John Velasquez says, let's go to English Channel. And they move up alongside of Cacique. And now Ramon Dominguez and Better Talk now are moving. And Relaxed Gesture is coming on too. Into the final furlong, the drama unfolds. It's English Channel, Cacique. Two and a half back to Relaxed Gesture. And Better Talk now won't get there today. It's English Channel and Cacique. And English Channel has won the United Nations under John Velasquez, beating Cacique. Relaxed Gesture was third, then Silverfoot, followed by Better Talk Now. And the last two past the wire were Shake the Bank and Ramazuti in 2.13 and 1.5 seconds. English Channel getting the victory in game fashion by a half a length. Got to the lead at the top of the stretch and was able to uh, fight hard to get the win. Not an easy effort considering he was a little bit ranked. Gave John Velasquez a little bit of trouble in the early portion of the race. But he did have that ground saving trip that's so important on the turf. Cacique running well to finish second. And relaxed gesture rallying from off the pace with a three wide move to settle for third. A bit disappointing was better talk now whose rabbit shake the bank did his job but uh, between the slightly soft footing, which he generally does like, and the fact that uh, nobody really went out and engaged Shake the Bank, Better Talk Now's late move came up a bit short with uh, Better Talk Now and Ramon Dominguez finishing fifth in the field of seven. The winner, English Channel, a chestnut four-year-old son of Smart Strike from Belva by Theatrical, was bred in Kentucky by Keen Ridge Farm and is owned by James Scatorchio. Trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden to victory by John Velasquez, English Channel covers the mile and three-eighths on the turf, labeled good in 213 and 1. We're going to head right back to Mammoth now for one of Saturday or Sunday's stakes features, the ungraded lamp lighter. This is for three-year-olds going a mile on the turf. Featured a horse that is only once defeated and thus far has done most of his racing sprinting on the turf. We'll see how he handles the stretch out. Let's head down to Mammoth and the running of the lamp lighter. They're racing in the lamplighter. And it's Mr. Silver on the inside with a good start. There goes Silver Prospector and smart enough though to set the pace and they're right together by the stands for the first time. Mr. Silver two and a half lengths off of them. Then it's Noble Deeds in fourth followed by Extra Bend and put on your dancing shoes. Silver Prospector smart enough not handling the turn very well there. He tried to get out. He's a half length behind. And now it's five lengths back to Mr. Silver, who's got three on Noble Deeds. After that comes Extra Bend and put on your dancing shoes. The pace is quick here. They ran a quarter in 22 and four. It is smart enough in front. Joe Bravo trying to settle him down, but smart enough is headstrong, and he opens up by two. Silver Prospector second by three and a half lengths. Mr. Silver is third by a length and a half. After that comes Noble Deeds in fourth. Break of another four back to Extra Bend. And put on your dancing shoes. 45 and two the half mile time. Very fast pace here for Smart Enough, who heads into the far turn. And Mr. Silver takes aim at him. Second on the outside. Noble Deeds is in third, two lengths off the lead. Here comes Extra Bend, and he's got run. He's four lengths behind, but he's coming. And right behind him, put on your dancing shoes. Silver Prospector trails. Three quarters in 108 and four. And they're into the final furlong. And Smart Enough is still there. He's two in front of Noble Deeds. An extra bend on the outside. It is still Smart Enough. Extra bend, second, closing through at the fence. Smart Enough, extra bend. Smart Enough gets there, drifting out in the end over extra bend. And then came Noble Deeds in 133 and three. Smart enough, handles the stretch out quite nicely, winning the fourth time in his fifth lifetime start. The winner of the Bow Genius last time out at Churchill Downs at the end of June, stretches out from five to a mile and handles it well. Winning by a neck is the favorite just over even money at the expense of Extra Bend with Noble Deeds back in the third spot. The winner, Smart Enough, is a gelded chestnut son of Horse Chestnut from Quick and Smart by Polish Numbers. Bred in Kentucky by F. Eugene Dixon and owned by Mr. Dixon's Erdenheim Farm. Trained by John Fisher and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Smart Enough covers the one mile on the turf course at Mammoth, labeled good in 133.
and three. We're going to remain on turf. We're going to leave Monmouth Park, and we are going to head to Colonial Downs in Virginia for Saturday's running of the DeHaas Stakes for older horses at a mile. Let's head down to Colonial and the DeHaas. And they're off. Confucius say in tune of the spirit, setting out to the front from legal control and touched by madness and back to wire bound. And back there is legal control and bestowed as the last horse into the first turn. A solid pace heating up between Confucius say and tune of the spirit of the outside. Tune of the spirit and an aggressive pace up front. It's very quick here. It touched by madness settles about six off the pace in third, followed by legal control fourth. Running tight is fifth against the fence. Wire bound racing in the clear and bestowed is last of all at about 10 to 11 lengths from a rock solid pace 22-3 opening quarter and it is set by tune of the spirit a length and a half in front confucius say second and touched by madness is in third running tide rides that rail in fourth followed by legal control fifth on the outside a two length break and bestowed tries to advance from the inside and wire bound is last of the well group field They're catching up with tune of the spirit after a half and 46 and two fifths of a second into the fiery turn confucius say rebids on from second then on the outside legal Legal control is third. Touched by Madness, fourth, and running tight is at the fence. Followed two lengths back by Wirebound, bestowed as last of all, eight to make up. They're at the top of the stretch. Two to the Spirit, tenacious after that fast pace, still trying to stick. It's two to the Spirit into the stretch, two length lead. Here's Touched by Madness, quickening up now, and Touched by Madness now engaging that leader in Bestowed. Bestowed has found Ribbon, explodes to the center of the course. Bestowed mows them all down. Bestowed on the outside. Bestowed's coming with a huge run, and Bestowed's in front now with a six to go from Touched by Madness. Last to first for Bestowed and Joe Rocco Jr. On to victory, Touched by Madness and Legal Control and Tune of the Spirit. Bestowed trained by Michael Dickinson, who trained a Haas. Bestowed getting the victory here, a New York bred four-year-old gelding trained by none other than Michael Dixon, Dickinson, the trainer of De Haas. Nice victory for this one by a length and a quarter. It's the two to one favorite from off the pace. In fact, a last to pace, last to first move for Bestowed. Touched by Madness running well to finish second as the second choice in the betting. Long shot legal control running third. The winner, Bestowed, is a New York bred gelding, a son of repeal from Blonde Lady by Rubiana, was bred by the Gallagher stud and is owned by the breeder, trained by Michael Dickinson, and ridden to victory by Joe Rocco Jr. Bestowed covers the mile on the Colonial Turf in 135 and 1. We're going to head to Kentucky now for a pair of two-year-old races, beginning with the debutante for two-year-old fillies going six furlongs. Let's head down to Kentucky in the grade three debutante. Off and running in the debutante. Gallon Dreamers brings out for the early lead. Beautiful venue, Chagall flashing speed on the outside. Lenaro came away a neck off the lead, racing fourth. They stack up across the track, then come together. And a rich woman, the early trailer, just steady there briefly, just two and a half lengths off the pace, up the backside, five across the track here. Come together by a head. Beautiful venue, Chagall's on the outside. Lenaro up the inside fence. Now on the far outside comes Gallon Dreamer gaining ground. And a rich woman trying to pick her way through traffic now. Now under Sean Bridgeman through the opening quarter in 21 and 4. Demanding fractions here. Gallon Dreamer and John Jacinto taking the lead. Three parts of a length in front come together on the inside second. Beautiful venue third. Chagall gears it up under Bejarano on the far outside. Rich Woman trying to get involved now. And Lenaro at the back of the pack in the stretch drive. Chagall cut loose by Bejarano. Accelerates clear. Here comes Rich Woman to make a race of it on the outside. Final furlong. Chagall shake it up by Bejarano, Rich Woman and Sean Bridgeman right up to her throat latch now. Chagall from Rich Woman. Rich Woman on by to take the lead. Chagall stubborn. Rich Woman. Chagall comes back on. Rich Woman by a nose in the debutante. Chagall a game second. And Lenaro is third. Time on the board was 1-10 and 2. Rich Woman now three for three lifetime. She began her career with a maiden win at Keeneland. Headed out to the West Coast to take advantage of uh, a fairly light field in the Cinderella at Hollywood Park earlier on in the meet. Now back to the, well, the Midwest and picking up a win in the grade three debutante. Rich Woman 
already been all over the country and already been quite successful. She gets the win over Chagall, who was the favorite at just over even money. A uh, maiden breaker at first asking, cost $825,000 as, uh, as a youngster and uh, is beginning to live up to those expectations, running second here and only her second career start. Lenaro, who was a maiden breaker last time out as well, finishing in the third spot. The winner, Rich Woman, is a dark bay or brown daughter of successful appeal from Rich Bay by Richmond, bred in Florida by High League Broad Racing Stable and owned by the breeder, trained by Steve Asmussen, ridden to victory by Sean Bridgemahan. In fact, it was a successful appeal exacta in there. Sean Bridgemahan riding Rich Woman to victory, covering the six furlongs in 110 and two. We're going to head right back to Kentucky and the running of the Grade 3 Bashford Manor. Once again, four two-year-olds going six furlongs. Let's head back to Churchill in the Bashford Manor. Off and running in the Bashford Manor. Tufelsberg stumbled shortly after the start. Chase City veered in sharply and is dead last early. Tufelsberg recovers, rushes out to take the lead. Run Alex Run racing in the second spot. Now Pegasus Wind is on the muscle and moves up into second. Then up the inside, Sherman Esk racing a club close fourth. Three back to Mr. Cougat in fifth. The lead squadron next by a couple more. Circular Key now eight lengths off the pace early and seven farther back to Chase City at the back of the pack. The opening quarter, 21 and three, moving right along into that far turn, Tufelsberg and Robbie Alvarado, a length in front. The first timer, Pegasus Wind, is tracking in hand in second, and Sherman Esk is racing third by two. Run Alex Run picking his way through the field and advancing steadily on the outside. Now Elite Squadron under pressure, and here comes Circular Key from the back of the pack to the top of the lane. They turn for home, the half mile and 45 seconds flat in the stretch drive. Long shot, Tufelsberg confronted by Pegasus Wind now. Here comes Sherman Esk and Run Alex Run on the far outside. Run, Alex, run. Sherman Esk now to fight it out the final 16th. Run, Alex, run. Sherman Esk, circular key flying up the inside. Sherman Esk, here comes circular key. Circular key exploding and winning in the final strides, taking the Bashford Manor with a huge run down the stretch. Sherman Esk was second. Run, Alex, run. Finished there. The time was 109 and four. Circular key now two for two. This one both times rallying from off the pace in rather unusual fashion for an early two-year-old. Generally, it is the speed balls that do the, do the uh, big winning early on, but this one seems to have the uh, ability to rally from off the pace and do it quite nicely here as the favorite by a length and a quarter over Sherman-esque with the second choice, Run Alex Run, finishing in the third spot. The winner, Circular Key, is a chestnut two-year-old colt, a son of Thunder Gulch out of grade one winning mare Circle of Life by Belong to Me. Bred in Kentucky by Doreen Tabor and owned by Michael Tabor, trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano. Circular Key covers the six furlongs at Churchill in 109 and 4. We're going to pause now for a brief message and when we return we'll be heading out to the West Coast for some stakes racing action from Hollywood. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now in Southern California. We're going to head back to last weekend, last uh, actually last Tuesday, the 4th of July, and the Hollywood Juvenile Championship for two-year-olds. This is a grade $300,000, six furlongs. Let's head back to, or out to California, rather, back to the two-year-olds and the Juvenile Championship. They're up. Fast start for you and I and Delmar and Swiss Swiffer. Diamond Dave and Easy Warrior are next, then Smart and Quiet into the outside Hot Flame. Hot Rod is next, then comes Tom Ricky, and the trailer is Great Hunter. Swiss Swiffer is faster than you and I at Delmar up the back stretch, but just by a neck, Swiss Swiffer the leader. Diamond Dave is just in behind those two and a length from the front. Easy Warrior had to check off the heels of Diamond Dave, and he'll have to wait for racing room. Meanwhile, Hot Flame moves up outside, and he takes third. Then it's two and a half lengths to Smart and Quiet. Great Hunter is out of last place. He's seven off the lead. Then Tom Ricky, and the trailer is Hot Rod, and they run around the far turn. Swiss Swiffer is is the leader. The Hot Flame runs up into second. Great Hunter has made up a lot of ground, and you better take a look at Great Hunter running up four wide. Meanwhile, Easy Warrior splits horses, and those are the two with the momentum off the top of the stretch, and here's Easy Warrior to emerge and take over the lead. Great Hunter ran at him at the quarter pole, but now Easy Warrior comes past mid-stretch, and he's two lengths in front. Great Hunter to the inside in second. Then comes Tom Ricky third, but Easy Warrior runs away and runs a big one to win the Hollywood Juvenile championship. Easy Warrior won by two. Great Hunter was second. Tom Ricky third. Diamond Dave finished fourth. Easy Warrior getting it done by two and three quarter rather easy lengths is the even money favorite over late charging Great Hunter with Tom Ricky a bit of a long shot finishing in the third spot after a slow start. The winner, Easy Warrior, Dark Bay or Brown, two-year-old son of exploit from Carson Gen by Carson City was bred in Kentucky by the Gulf Coast Farms Bloodstock Limited owned by Zayat Stables Limited and trained by Bob Baffert, ridden to victory by David Flores, Easy Warrior. Covers the six furlongs at Hollywood in 109 and four. Pair of stakes over the weekend for you. This weekend at Hollywood Park, going back to the grade two swaps for three-year-olds on Saturday. Let's head back to California and the running of the swaps. They're up. AP Warrior and Point Determined break one, two. Point Determined is asked for speed earlier to stay with AP Warrior, but it's AP Warrior quickest into the clubhouse turn. Point Determined is into the bid in second. Arson Squad is third, and Potential was slow into stride. He's alongside Arson Squad as they race at the clubhouse turn. AP Warrior and Point Determined, one, two. AP Warrior does it comfortably for David Flores. He's three quarters of a length in front. Point Determined is pushed along by Victor, Victor Espinosa to stay with him early. AP Warrior leads by a half length. Point Determined is second by two lengths. Arson Squad tracks the front runners third and Potential's fourth and last. He's four lengths from the front, four and a half furlongs left to run in the 33rd swap stakes and AP Warrior is the leader. It is AP Warrior now just a neck in front of Point Determined who continues to push along outside of him. AP Warrior seems to be traveling more comfortably than Point Determined who has to be pushed along to stay with the front runner. AP Warrior into the far turn. He is a neck in front of Point Determined in second. Arson Squad is asked to go after the top two now by Alex Solis. He is two from the front. Potential is now six behind, three furlongs left to run. AP Warrior and Point Determined. Point Determined pokes his nose in front. AP Warrior is now pushed along by David Flores. Meanwhile, Arson Squad's about to join the party three deep. Here comes Arson Squad, and AP Warrior has dropped back to third at the top of the stretch. Arson Squad is outside of Point Determined. These are the two off the top of the turn. AP Warrior's back in third, and they come to the final furlong in the swap stakes, and Arson Squad has taken over the lead. It is Arson Squad now three quarters of a length in front of Point Determined in second. Not today for AP Warrior. Arson Squad's in front. Point Determined is second. Arson Squad in front. The 33rd Swaps Breeders' Cup Stakes goes to Arson Squad over Point Determined. AP Warrior third and potential finish fourth. Arson Squad getting the win here, turning the tables on Point Determined and AP Warrior, who he had uh, been defeated by last time out in the affirmed right here at Hollywood Park. This time makes a three wide move in a four horse field to win by a length over the favored, even, uh, even money favorite, Point Determined, with AP Warrior, the early pace setter, settling for third, fourth, and last. Potential, who is a maiden who has moved into this race to take advantage of the short field, his connections were rewarded with over $21,000 in purse money. 
The winner arson squad is a dark bay or brown gelded three-year-old son of Brahms from Majestic Fire by Green Dancer, bred in Pennsylvania by E&D Enterprises and owned by JMS Stable, trained by Bruce Headley, ridden to victory by Alex Solis. Arson squad covers the nine furlongs at Hollywood in 148 and two. Right back to Hollywood for the big race of the weekend, the mile and a quarter grade one $750,000 Hollywood Gold Cup. Let's head back to California and the Gold Cup. They're up. Lava Man stumbled noticeably at the start, but quickly and agilely recovers. But Magnum gets the jump on him early, and Magnum will lead them. Lava Man will sit second, and he's taken in hand now by Corey Nakatani. Ace Blue is close to the pace in third. Super Frolic away in fourth, and the early trailer is Seek Gold, and Magnum can dictate to Lava Man, and he will. Magnum going to cross over in front of him at the clubhouse turn. Lava Man has no choice but to take back, sit second, and angle outside of Magnum. Meanwhile, Ace Blue has run up into second, so Magnum's the leader, and Ace Blue is second. Lava Man settles in third now, and he's two from the front. Super Frolic is out of last place. He is four lengths off the lead, and stretch running Kentucky in favor. Seek Gold is at the back of the pack as they turn into the backstretch. In the 67th Hollywood Gold Cup, and Ace Blue makes the lead. It is Ace Blue, but that lead was short-lived as Magnum comes right back at him and retakes it, and now Magnum sprints up the backstretch a length in front. Ace Blue is is second. Lava Man is two and a half lengths behind in third. Corey Nakatani going to angle him to the three path. He's traveling comfortably, but Magnum gets the jump at the half mile pole. Super Frolic and Seek Gold are fourth and fifth, and they are four lengths behind. There's a half mile left to run. Magnum is the leader. He's a length in front of Ace Blue. Lava Man going to go up three wide, and here comes Lava Man to put his head into second, and now the race is on as Magnum can feel the pressure of Lava Man, and these two sprint away midway around the far turn. Ace Blue Blue will watch those two run away. Super Frolic is at the rail. Seek Gold is eight behind, and they run to the top of the stretch. Magnum's at the rail. Lava Man is alongside in second. Ace Blue's actually back into the bid. He's only a length and a half from the front. Super Frolic is next, and Lava Man and Magnum come to the final furlong, and Magnum has lost the lead to Lava Man. Lava Man is ahead in front. Magnum is battling on bravely and coming back. Ace Blue's only a length from Lava Man. Lava Man has the lead. He's put away Magnum, but Ace Blue is charged. Lava Man, Ace Blue, right together! I think Ace Blue had his nose down on the wire. This is desperately close, but I think Ace Blue may have pulled off a shocker in the Hollywood Gold Cup. Very exciting finish for Lava Man, getting the win by a nose with uh, the game long shot, Ace Blue, uh, nearly his nemesis, but Lava Man runs his seasonal record to five for five. Three of them grade ones, three of them state bred races. This is also going to be his, uh, his second consecutive victory in grade one company, one on the turf in the Whittingham last time out, and now returns at a mile and a quarter on the main track, victorious once again. Lava Man, probably the, uh, the most successful $50,000 claim of the last few years, clearly has, uh, has put himself into a major position in the horse of the year race. Lava Man. A dark bear brown gelded son of Slew City Slew from Lil, Lil Miss Leonard by Nostalgia Star was bred in California by Lonnie Arterburn, Eve Kielman, and Kim Kielman, owned by the STD Racing Stable and Jason Wood, trained by Doug O'Neill and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. A lava Man runs the mile and a quarter at Hollywood in 201 flat. We're going to head back to New York now, not quite as far as Belmont. We're going to stop at Finger Lakes on the way back into New York for a pair of stakes races from last Tuesday. Both for New York State breads, we're going to kick things off with the Arctic Queen. This one for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up sprinting six furlongs. Let's head out to Finger Lakes and the Arctic Queen. They're off in the Arctic Queen handicap. And from the inside, 10 on top will break on top. Right in between horses, Sweet Sweet going up with the leader. A length on the outside is Sanichi in third. There's another length back to Sweet Sweet Molly fourth. Better than four and a half to Carlo. Ruby's Rocket is down along on the fence. And then we come back to Wattrell's Dahlia. They zip a quarter, 21 and three. And Sweet Sweet takes over the lead, draws off by a length and a half. She's 10 on top as second. There's another length and a half. Sanichi is third. Then we come back to Sweet Sweet Molly fourth. 
There's a gap of four in along on the rail to Ruby's Rocket. Carlo not firing. And another two and a half lengths to Watrell's Dahlia. The half and 44 and four, and they turn for home. The one to catch, sweet, sweet in the Arctic Queen, still has it by a length and a half. She's 10 on top, is second. Carlo roaring up from the back of the pack, but a lot of work to do. Through the stretch, it's sweet, sweet with the lead by two and a half. In between horses, Ruby's Rocket coming on. It's Ruby's Rocket between horses and the outside Watrell's Dahlia. And then we come back to Shen on seven. She's on 10 on top. Sweet, sweet getting the victory here. A nice effort by this filly, a daughter of a Saratoga Stakes winner, getting the win as the favorite, shipping in from New York to take advantage of the New York bread conditions up at Finger Lakes. Ruby's Rocket, who has been a pretty steady customer out there, finishing in the second spot, albeit against a little bit lesser. Watch Riles Dahlia rallying from off the pace to finish third. The winner, Sweet Sweet, a dark bay or brown daughter of honor and glory from How About Now by Pentelicus, was bred in New York by the Stonewall Farm and is owned by Mr. Barry K. Schwartz, who is the uh, proprietor of Stonewall, trained by Michael Hushin and ridden to victory by John DeVilla Jr. Sweet Sweet covers the six furlongs of the Arctic Queen in 111 and 1. Next up, older filly and mare sprinters in the gray, the uh, New York bred restricted Niagara, also a $50,000 six furlongs. Let's head back to Finger Lakes and the running of the Niagara. They're off in the Niagara stakes. Flight of goes quick to the front. Live by request with good early speed. And uh, stand by the phone coming on. As they move away up the back stretch, live by request the half a length. Doll Baby is pushed alongside second. Sandwich in between them. Stand by the phone. These three across the track in a torrid battle on the front end. There's a gap of two to fly to me. Another uh, two and a half lengths to Amerowim. And way, way back trailing is Morganatic. The quarter in 22. As they move midway on the turn. On the outside, Doll Baby to take over the lead a half a length. In between horses, stand by the phone, battles right back alongside. Live by request, still right there on the rail in third. They go the half and 45 and turn for home in the Niagara Stakes. In the center of the track, it's Doll Baby. John DeVilla Jr., strong riding this afternoon and has the lead by better the length and a half. Stand by the phone, not done yet, trying to come on in deep stretch. Doll Baby with the lead. Stand by the phone coming on in deep stretch. These two together. Doll Baby ahead to win the Niagara. Stand by the phone. And then we came back to a closing fly. Fly to me and on the rail. Morgan Attic. These two in a show photo. Doll Baby, another one uh, in from downstate. Getting the win by a neck over stand by the phone and fly to me. The winner, Doll Baby, a dark or a bay filly, a daughter of City Dancer from Sand Pirate by Desert Wine, was bred in New York by David Cassidy and is owned by the ELR Stable. Trained by Bruce Levine and ridden to victory by John DeVilla Jr. Swept the stakes on Tuesday at Finger Lakes. Doll Baby completes the six furlongs at Finger Lakes last Tuesday in 111 and 4. We're going to pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at stakes racing action from Belmont Park. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Belmont Park. We're going to go all the way back to last Monday's running of the Grade 2 Genuine Risk Breeders' Cup for older filly and mare sprinters. Let's head to Belmont, the running of the Genuine Risk. And they're off. And it's Stormy Kiss who jumps out of there, out for that early lead. And Kalila's on the outside and behaving badly has come out running third. Swap Flipperoo is the last of the four as they move into the far turn. And it's Stormy Kiss in front. Kalila second. Garrett Gomez trying to motivate the favorite here, behaving badly. They're just in behind the lead and now taken to the outside for clear running. Swap Flipperoo trails the field. That quarter went in 22 and 2. And it's Stormy Kiss, the leader, coming to the top of the stretch. Kalila's right alongside her. Behaving badly, still third, but edging up on the far outside. Swap Flipperoo was fourth with a quarter mile to go. The field turning for home. Stormy Kiss cuts the corner. Kalila's right there with her in between horses on the outside behaving badly. So it's those three across the track. Swap Flipperoo not far behind. And now Garrett Gomez giving behaving badly her cue and she is responding. It is behaving badly in front. As Stormy Kiss fights her all the way down to the line, Swap Flipperoo third in closing, coming down to the finish. And it is behaving badly, getting the job done once again. Behaving badly, a half-length winner of the Genuine Risk over Swap Flipperoo and Stormy Kiss. It was a bit of a homecoming for Behaving Badly in New York Bread, making her New York debut and winning by a half a length as the favorite over Swap Flipperoo and Stormy Kiss. Behaving Badly had begun her career and actually continued her career very impressively out in Southern California primarily for Bob Baffert. Did disappoint a little bit down at Churchill Downs, but uh, apart from that, she has been a very steady customer now heading to her native New York to pick up a grade two grade two credential. Behaving Badly is a bay mare, a daughter of pioneering from timeliness by Sir Raleigh. Bred in New York by Thomas and Lakin and owned by Hal, Earnh Hal and Patty Earnhardt. Trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Behaving Badly covers the six furlongs at Belmont Park in 109 and 4. We're going to head back to Tuesday now in a pair of 4th of July stakes, beginning with the Tremont, an ungraded event for the two-year-olds. Let's head down to Belmont and the Tremont. And they're off. A bad stumble at the break for Out of Guada, stumbling badly soon after the start, and that has left him in last place as they race up the backstretch into the far turn. Gonzo Bonzo Beans going head to head with Pride of Seattle out of Guetta, making up ground quickly, is now third, just a length and a half behind. And Superstar Lebo is fourth as they round the far turn. And it's Gonzo Bonzo Beans and Pride of Seattle and out of Guetta now joins the fray. They're a quarter and 22 and three fifths seconds by the back Superstar Lebo. And it's out of Guetta who has taken the lead and done it under a hand ride. Gonzo Bonzo Beans desperate to try to stay with out of Guetta, who's now got a length and a half lead as they come down to mid stretch. Gonzo Bonzo Beans is second, followed by Pride of Seattle and Superstar Lebo. Coming down to the final 16th, out of Guetta. Well, this is a very promising colt here. Out of Guetta. Fell coming out of the gate and gallops home a winner of the 114th Tremont Stakes. Beating Gonzo Bonzo Beans by three, Proud of Seattle was third. Out of Gouda, picking up the victory here by two and a quarter lengths is the heavy favorite. Three of the four horses in this field got off to poor starts. The only one that uh, broke all that alertly was Gonzo Bonzo Beans, who held on well to finish second. Pride of Seattle finishing a well-beaten third. The winner out of Gouda is a chestnut colt, a two-year-old son of out of place from Gouda by Gone West. Bren, it, bred in Kentucky by James Hayward and tr owned by the Pegasus Dream Stable, trained by Todd Fletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez out of Gouda covers the five and a half furlongs of the Tremont in 106 and three. We're gonna head right back down to New York now in the grade two Dwyer for three-year-olds, $150,000. Let's head down to New York and the Dwyer. And they're off. Das Stoops, an alert start quickly in front. Regent Spirit comes away in good order. 
Heat entry off a beat slowly is rushing up on the inside along with Don't Fear the Reaper. And those two go on with it. And it's Keyed entry. Keyed up and in front now. Don't Fear the Reaper now a length behind it in second. Regent Spirit is third. Just stoops fourth on the outside. Strong contenders relatively close. He's only three lengths from the front now. And Doc Cheney trails the field. Reserved about five lengths from the leader. And the leader is Keyed Entry, who's running well off the track. Off the rail, the quarter goes in 23 and one-fifth seconds. Keyed Entry in front. Right in behind the firing line of Regent Spirit. Don't Fear the Reaper. On the far outside to stoops and down toward the inside. Strong contender. Two and a half lengths back to Doc Doc Cheney still on hold around the far turn after a half in 46 and two fifth seconds. They've given the rail to strong contender and there he goes to grab the lead away from Keat Entry. Strong contender with a bold move beneath Edgar Prado has taken the lead at the midway point on the turn. De Stoops is second and Keat Entry is going in the wrong direction. Now being passed by Doc Cheney and Doc Cheney is now third. Regent Spirit farther back and the trailer is now Don't Fear the Reaper and they're coming to the top of the stretch and it's strong contender in front by a half length as the field turns for home. De Stoops can't quite stay with them. Here's Doc Cheney with the final try on the outside but strong contender is leaving them behind. Strong contender in Edgar Prado stride past the eighth pole by five widening lengths over Doc Cheney and the uh, Stoops. And here's a very intriguing three-year-old. Strong contender. Most impressive to win. The Dwyer geared down by a half a dozen lengths over Doc Cheney, the Stoops, and Regent Spirit. Strong contender, Edgar Prado, picking up the victory. Very impressive, this horse, uh, although the time was rather slow. It was a strange day. The racing uh, times got slower and slower as the day went by, and uh, this horse gallops out to nearly an eight-length victory as the second choice, Keyed Entry, who did show good early speed and faded rather badly, did uh, was the favorite, but strong contender, very impressive visually, despite a relatively slow final time for this race, winning at the expense of Doc Cheney, who rallied well from off the pace and uh, Stoops who was a bit of a stretch out uh, type of horse. He came in from California for Bob Baffert and uh, stuck around for this race. Obviously looked like a decent spot for him to try the stretch out once again and he ran well to finish third after chasing the early pace. The winner strong contender is a chestnut three-year-old son of Maria's Mon from Copenhagen by Dynaformer. Bred in Kentucky by the Arasanta Maria de Aras and owned by John Oxley, trained by John Ward, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Strong contender covers the mile in the 16th at Belmont in 145 and 1. We've caught up and we're back to this weekend now. We'll take a look at uh, Saturday's running of the Grade 1 Priors Breeders' Cup Stakes. This is for older Philly and or three-year-old Philly sprinters. Let's head down to New York and the Prioress. And they're off. Misty Rosette fires out of there quickly. And there goes Sylvestris down to her inside. From the outside, there goes Wynn McCool and Diplomat Lady. And it's a four-way scramble. And they are really scrambling for that lead. And it's Wynn McCool on the far outside. Up for a short lead. Sylvestris is second. And Misty Rosette is now back to third. Diplomat Lady under a busy ride is now back to fourth. Three lengths back to Wild Gams. The quarter in a scorching 21 and four-fifth seconds. Farther back in the field are Wildcat Betty B and Capote's crown those two together about seven lengths from the wild battle up front and Livermore Valley trails the field and it's Wynn McCool who's down on the rail. Misty Rosette is moving right with her stride for stride at the quarter pole. Just in behind them, Diplomat Lady, a length and a half behind in third. Wild Gams revving up on the far outside fourth. Wildcat Betty B is coming down the center of the track. The half went in 44 and one fifth seconds. Sensational fractions. Wynn McCool desperate now. Misty Rosette is right there. And here comes Wild Gams. And here comes Wildcat Betty B. Wild Gams. Wildcat Betty B, wild finish. That goes to Wildcat Betty B by a head over Wild Gams. Livermore Valley was third, four horses in a photo for fourth in a thriller in the Prioress. Wildcat Betty B picking up the win. Her first race since running in the uh, winning the Miss Preakness in mid-May last time out. She is uh, now five for eight lifetime and really looks to be a very nice three-year-old sprinting filly and a little bit overlooked, as must say, at the betting windows. 
She gets the win over Wild Gams, who threw in an absolute clunker last time out, very badly beaten last time out, but she certainly did rebound to her prior form with this one, Livermore Valley, completing the order of the top three with an off-the-pace rallying move at 21 to 1. Disappointing in the field was Capote's crown, who did have a bit of a wide trip, but other than that, really no excuse at all after she had romped about 27 lengths in front of Wild Gams in their most recent meeting. The winner, Wildcat Betty B, earning her first grade one. Wildcat Betty B is a chestnut daughter of Meadow Lake from num one number short by Catawice, bred in Kentucky by Barry Becker and Judith Becker, owned by Oasis Race Racing and trained by Larry Jones. Ridden to victory by Mario, Mario Pino, Wildcat Betty B covers the six furlongs at Belmont in 109 flat. Next up, we're going to head back to Belmont and the Lexington Stakes. This is a grade $300,000 for the three-year-olds on the grass. Let's head down to New York and the Lexington. And they're off to market and cool Casanova. On the far outside, it's to Sunder. And through on the rail, there goes Carnera. And two senders extremely wide into the turn. Carneras come through on the inside. Two sender very keen to go on now. And it's two sender who hooks up with Carnera in the early stages here. Very early on, two sender running hard. And he's run hard to take over that lead from Carnera. On the outside, Cool Casanova runs in third. Cornelio Velasquez. Well in hand with aftermarket, a break of about seven or eight. Back to Crossword, who's just allowed to gallop along easily. So up front, they're moving right along here. 23 and one was the opening quarter, and it's two sender in front. Carnera second on the inside. Then after market, who's only two lengths from the lead, running along and still in hand in third position on the outside, Cool Casanova, seven or eight back to Crossword, who's still loping along leisurely at the back of the pack. Behind fast fractions, 46 and four was that half mile into the far turn. Two Sunder, Carnera is trying to come through on the inside after that lead. Aftermarket gets a nudge from Cornelio Velasquez, third. Cool Casanova still running along in fourth. Farther back, Crossword. Crossword now starting to come alive as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. He's about seven lengths from the lead, but really kicking in now. And now the field turns for home. It is Carnera and Two Sunder on the outside, Aftermarket. Top of the stretch, Carnera has cut the corner to the lead. Aftermarket veered in, veered in sharply just ahead of Two Sunder. In the meantime, Crossword's now third. There's one furlong to go. It is Carnera on the outside. Here comes after Market to take the lead. After Market, Carnera and Crossword. After Market gets there after veering in severely at the top of the stretch, and it's a tight photo for second between Crossword and Carnera. Aftermarket now three for three. Broke his maiden one in allowance and has now earned his first stakes credential and did so by a length and a half. He looks a little bit green, still has a tendency to run a little greenly lugging in in the upper stretch. He did straighten away nicely, however, and won off fairly handily from Carnera and Crossword, who rallied from third or two third. The winner, Aftermarket is a bay or dark bay or brown son of Stormcat out of grade one winning turf mare Tranquility Lake by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by Mr. and Mrs. Martin Wygott and owned by the Breeders, trained by Bill Mott, ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez. Aftermarket runs the nine furlongs on the Belmont turf and one forty-eight and four. We have a special overseas feature to bring to you as well. We've got last weekend's running of the Group 1 Coral Eclipse from Sandown. This is a race worth nearly $800,000 in American money, run at the about distance of a mile and a quarter. Let's head to Sandown and the Coral Eclipse. They're off, racing then over a mile and a quarter for this Coral Eclipse. Naquel Me Boy is the first one away, but Royal Alchemist with the red cap goes through to set the pace and leads up now to not now Cato, yellow cap in second place, then Snaquel Me Boy, notable guest with the pink cap is next, and then comes Blue Monday. Ouija Board follows Blue Monday, then Aussie Rules, and then comes David Jr., who's racing towards the inside of Hattan as they race through the first two furlongs. And Royal Alchemist sets the gallop by about two lengths, but not fast enough for Richard Hughes on Notable Guest, who's going up to hassle the leader. 
A length and a half then to Not Now Katos. Now Kwame Boy is next and then comes Blue Monday. One length behind these is Aussie Rules on the outside of Ouija board with the black jacket, white cap. On her outside in white and red is Hatam. And the light blue jacket of David Jr. with Jamie Spencer is the back marker of this coral eclipse as they head towards the end of the back straight. Royal Alchemist still leads, shows in front by a length. To notable guest in second place, almost two lengths behind then to not now Cato on the inside of Snoqual, me boy. A length and a half to the red cap of Blue Monday on the inside of the dark jacket of Aussie Rules. Then comes Ouija Board, just in behind now Hatam and David Jr., the bat marker. So the front two in the market are the last two in the race as they come down the home straight in the Coral Eclipse. Royal Alchemist then, still out in front, notable guest in second place. Then not now Cato, just niggled along against the rails from Snoqual, me boy. Then in behind this is Aussie Rules making progress on the outside. Ouija Ball begins to improve. Blue Monday's driven along. Then Hatan and David Jr. as they head then down with two furlongs to go. Royal Alchemist from Snoqual, me boy. Then comes Ouija Ball. He's being leaned on by Aussie Rules. David Jr. unleashed down the outside. Snoqual, me boy. Aussie Rules. David Jr. Royal Alchemist still there against the rails. Ouija Ball a trouble passage. It's David Jr. and Jamie Spencer. Lead inside the last furlong now to Aussie Rules. Then not now Cato, but up towards the line. David Jr. and Jamie Spencer win by a couple of lengths. Not now Cato may just have been second and tight third between Blue Monday on the outside of Aussie Rules. David Jr., you may remember him as the winner of the Dubai Duty Free on uh, World Cup night, was fourth last time out with very little excuse at Royal Ascot behind Ouija board, but here turns the tables on that mare who had a very difficult trip after being a bit hemmed in uh, from about the two furlong out pull, but uh, she, did, uh, she did have a bit of a difficulty, and here David Jr. able to take advantage with an off-the-pace rallying move to win very impressive in this group one effort. The winner, David Jr., wins at the expense of not now Cato, who had a pretty nice trip. Blue Monday dwelt in the early portion of the, uh, the race and rallied well, but uh, was no match for the winner. The winner, David Jr., is a four-year-old chestnut son of Pleasant Tap from Paradise River by Irish River. He was bred in Kentucky and is owned by Roldvale Limited and Gold Group International. Trained by Brian Meehan, ridden to victory by Jamie Spencer, David Jr. covers the about distance of a mile and a quarter at Sandown in 207 and 1. That's going to wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.